everybody guess what we are outside today with Carl Virgo painter sculptor he does just about any type of medium today he's working with oils we're out here in Orland Park back of um, the house where he's staying where he has a lovely view of nature everywhere Hey Carl, how you doing? I'm doing good today. Uh, Robin, how are you? Oh, I'm doing good. I'm happy to be out here in the sun. It's fresh a lovely air. day, fresh air. And I know, um, guys, we've talked about plein air painting with another artist and we will um, be doing more of these kind of videos um, next year as well. So, but today is a special day with Carl and he's looking at some beautiful landscape ahead and we have such beautiful skies today too. Mix of um, clouds and blue skies. So it's very nice out here today. So Carl, can you talk to us a little bit about um, how it feels being out here, plain air painting opposed to, you know, painting in your studio? Well, there's advantages and disadvantages. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is uh, I love being outside. It's great to get the fresh air and be outside. However, there are times in the season where in the summer, late in the day, or early in the day, the mosquitoes can be horrendous. Um, but that's one of the things that you have to deal with. Uh, and the way the light changes, the light changes very quickly when you work outside. I very seldom do I ever finish a painting on the spot. Yeah. Although occasionally it might happen if I do a, something on a smaller scale. Uh, but for the most part, um, this working in the studio is really nice because it's convenient, especially in the winter months. You can take your time. You don't have the bugs to deal with uh, and, and things are not changing that quickly. Right. So, um, but it's a challenge. Yeah, it definitely is a challenge working outside. Do you, how does it feel like just being able to feel the wind on your face and listening to the birds chirp and the, and the, and the trees, you know, rustling, does that impact the emotional part of the piece for you? Yeah, of course it does. Uh, it's, it's part of the experience. Uh, it adds to it because you're, you're experiencing something right in front of your eyes visually. And um, it's, it, it's just, uh, it's very exciting actually. I, um, it's something that people don't do as much as they, that they used to do back in the days when all the French Impressionists used to go outside and in all sorts of weather in the winter and and they would uh, do these absolutely gorgeous paintings, but they would rework them inside as well. Um, they would go back and forth, but just definitely being out, being out gives you, you do things I think outside that you wouldn't normally do in the studio. And it kind of pushes you to, to uh, push the use of color, to be more freer, and you're not so confined. And when you're working, um, like you're talking about the, how the light changes. Um, when I first came, you were talking about like we, I have some pictures that I'll post to, um, at the end of the video of some of the paintings that he's done. Um, but <clears throat> so those paintings, you know, those are kind of what you would call what a quick sketch. Uh, the ones that I showed you previously, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, those were all done outside, and there was no need. Uh, there was no need for me to finish them through on the spot. I basically get the block in of what I need, and then uh, in the winter months and in the studio, I through recollection you 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 remember and you bring out these other things. Um, and the greatest thing about it is that you don't get, you don't become a slave to what is there. Because yeah. it doesn't make any sense to copy what's in front of you. Exactly. That doesn't make any sense. You know, and we need balance. So you need to, whatever you work on, whatever you do, you just try 
uh, to free yourself from copying anything and to um, explore in your mind. In yeah, your and to, 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 keep, to keep what you're doing balanced and be creative with it. Um, and, and that's a great, that's one of the greatest things about plain air, yeah. I think. Well, I'm sure. I mean, you know, I haven't really experienced too much plain air painting. I've done some, mostly watercolors, you know, something easy for me to carry around um, because I'm, physically I can't carry a whole lot of equipment with me when I go out. But I love being out in nature and, you know, I, I think part of this whole channel and starting for our diaries is really inspiring to me in itself because now I'm not confined to a space per se and now I can get out and I can talk with artists in plain air or I can come and talk to you while you're creating in plain air you know what I mean mm -hmm. and I think in itself provides inspiration to not only me but I'm hoping to our viewers as well so if you had some advice to give somebody who's just getting started doing plain air painting, what would you say? I would say go out, number one, do not try to copy what's in front of your face. Try to relax and uh, to just try to keep a balance of everything um, and experiment with color. Um, because uh, working outside, it, it's so sometimes so difficult to get the exact color that you're actually looking at and that's not really the key the key is the balance of everything and, and the colors that you put down yeah I would say too my advice would be just like just like I would give to a photographer don't just set up your camera and just start shooting take a walk Exa Sit down, exactly. be in nature, let it speak to you. You know, um, photographing something isn't just setting up your expensive camera and letting the camera take this amazing photograph and you don't even know what you're looking at. Um, you know, sit back, listen to the birds, feel the wind, you know, look around, let it absorb you, and then get started. Wouldn't you say that'd be great? Absolutely. Yeah, I totally agree with you on that. Yeah. I, I'm, I feel so relaxed right now. It's almost like I don't even want to talk. I just want to listen to everything that's going on here. You know what I mean? Mm hmm So I envy you that you have this beautiful spot now to paint. And I'm also really glad that you do because, you know, Carl and I have gone back uh, now 12 years, Carl, well, 11 years. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I think we've always inspired each other in the studio one way or the other. But this is the first time we've been outside together and me sitting back watching you be creative. Isn't that something? Out of 11 years? <laughs> I don't know why do we, we waited so long, Robin. <laughs> well, you know, when you're in the concrete jungle of things, you're sort of in this midst of the hustle and bustle. Yeah. And uh, I think part of that, you just, you know, you get in the studio and you're just getting busy and it, being outside just isn't always an option especially being in the city. Yeah, it's not it, it, it's not easy to always get out depending on where you live. Although the city and the parks, uh, I did a lot of sketching in the parks are very nice. The ones that have a lot of trees, of course, and that. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are options yeah. to get out, you know. Um, I went to the American Academy of Art and uh, had a couple of really good friends who are gone now but we used to go out uh, downtown and we would sketch down by the lake all the time. Yeah, and when you could get to the lake. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right, when we could get to the lake. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so in school, do you feel like it's prepared you uh, for the art world now that you've kind of 
really dug your heels deep in it? Well, art school was a very valuable thing for me uh, because I needed to really learn uh, I needed to learn technique, the basics, learn how to draw, things like that. But then I realized that it almost took me 10 years to unlearn a lot of things that, that, I, didn't, um, that I didn't need. And one of them was, I, I actually did a lot of commercial artwork. So at that time, everything was extremely realistic and photorealism, and that really deterred my creativity. Uh, I was not really able to be super free, and I was doing a lot of illustrations and things. And I enjoyed the work, but it wasn't really creative artwork. Yeah. I felt that it wasn't uh, me using my creative potential. And do you feel like um, after you working for so long in the commercial aspect, when you finally got like your own studio and all that stuff and you were working, how did that feel for you? Uh, it was really refreshing. It was really great. Uh, actually, I worked about seven or eight years doing that type of work and uh, I really freed myself from that um, at one point and uh, I didn't want to sit there with uh, under a magnifying glass and doing this fine super fine detail I just wanted to do something a little more open and more relaxed I think uh, you know it's interesting that you say that because it's I think at our ages when as we grow you know, we've experienced a whole lot over the years. Um, and I think even it, over the years, even it doesn't really matter what age you are, but you, you should experience different things. Don't you think? Oh, I definitely agree. I mean, I think it, what I did at art school when I was doing illustrations and, and photorealism, that was really a great foundation for me. I'm glad I did that. But to stay in that and do that the rest of my life didn't make sense to me. I knew that I wanted to explore and I started doing abstract work. Um, but I, wa I would always go back and forth, representational and abstract. And really the differences are arbitrary. Um, all artwork is abstract, um, you know, if you really think about it. Right, yeah. Um, Yeah, that's a that's a good um, way to look at it. I hope you guys uh, can hear the the rustling of the trees and the birds in the background. Um, it really is just so nice to be out here, and I'm. I mean, I'm I'm. I think for Carl, it, <laughs> we were just talking about, boy, wouldn't it be nice too to get some nice winter scapes out here? Because <laughs> um, he's got just about anywhere he could set up in these bare trees, such large trees. And now's a great time because now you're starting to get the fall colors. Yeah, the colors are changing and being out here, especially if, I mean, I'm fortunate to be out here and I've been painting every day. And I see, like, I know somebody in the city says, oh yeah, the leaves are starting to change. But I mean, I see uh, colors changing from day to day to day because I'm like here every day and spending, spending the time out here. It's, 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 it's really, and I never really did that in my life before where I had so much time in succession of days in a row to see how nature changes from day to day. Yeah. I was always in a studio in the city with no windows and right, right. You know, and here I'm more aware of it. And my sense of color has really heightened that like never before. I'm using, you know, a tree. What color is a tree? It can be black. I've seen it like black, like black out of a tube. It can be purple, it can be red, it can be orange. The the, the trunk of a tree mm -hmm. is what I'm talking about. Um it's amazing how we... Like these above you, they have sort mm -hmm. of a red hint. Uh, 
green hints i mean you can see i mean you are when you're in nature it's it is your senses are way more acute and now what like you told me inside you're retired now so you can do whatever you want <laughs> well not everything i want well but uh, you've got time to just but i'm able to do what i've i've been wanting to do for a long time um, when you have financial restraints and you have to work commercially to pay the bills, yeah, you have to do what you have to do as an artist. We all understand that, right? You know, I'm I've got the freedom now to 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 spend more time uh, doing what I really love, and I'm not I'm not. It's nice to not be anxious about worried about oh I got to get this done because I need to get my money and you know I don't care. You know, it's a nice feeling to be like that. I wish everybody could be like that at some point, actually. Yeah, it would be lovely, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm about to be like you in a little bit, you know, um, and have more free time to visit artists and free time to do my own art, um, which, you know, I've always made time to do my art, but I just want to be, I just want to find myself outdoors more. And since this pandemic, I can tell you, I've been outside more than I probably have been outside ever in life. I mean, I've been out every single day. Yeah, being outside is really refreshing, uh, especially to artists. And you don't have to, uh, plain air painting does not necessarily mean that you can set up, you have to set up your easel and paint uh, the trees or the river. Uh, Hans Hoffman, he was an abstract expressionist. He used to go outside all the time and just look at the look at the colors around and he would do these abstract paintings. Yeah. He wouldn't even do what's in front of him. He would just absorb it. Yeah. He would absorb the whole day, the wind, the smell, the colors. And and he uh, was one of my favorite uh, Abex artists actually. Um, but yeah, um, you can do anything you want to do. So do you do you miss the studio days? Um, no, I mean, but when it gets cold, I'm gonna want to be inside painting. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Even though I'd, I will go outside, but your your time uh, that you spend outside is shortened. Yeah. Well, right. I just meant like you know our studio days back, you know, uh -oh. with Third Fridays. And oh, with all, all of that. Stuff. No, I do not miss that at all. I think that was actually kind of. Um, um, you know, what would the word be? Um, it was like I had to perform, like I was on stage and I had to, you know, um, kind of do my duty to meet all the people and greet them and explain things over and over and over again. Yeah. And I would get the same questions and comments and answers. Um, all the time, yeah. Yeah, I haven't. Uh, I thought I might miss it, actually. But since the pandemic and we've been shut down and, you know, there, there's a few studios starting to open up now, but I'm just not interested, you know. It isn't that I don't miss, you know, the people that I meet. You know, I love, I love talking to people and meeting new people, but it, it became to me more of a performance. And albeit, you know, I've always been, you know, um, real about myself. I've never talked above who I am, never tried to make a spectacle or anything like that. But you almost feel like parts of it, you know, becomes that, whether you want that to happen or not. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree totally, yeah. But it's definitely like out here, you feel like you got your own little secret garden, huh? Nobody's bugging you. Nobody's walking around like a park, you know? Uh, yeah, here is really, I really love it here. But but as well, I, a lot of times I've worked down by the lakefront or, 
in the city and people would stop and say, oh, I like that, I, you know, whatever, and they'd start talking to you. And uh, I didn't, I don't mind that, you know, it's kind of nice. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, I think that maybe for the beginner that might be a little intimidating when people come up to you, you know. And, uh, but as an artist, you got to get rid of all the pomposity and don't uh, worry about what other people think because I've had people um, tell me that, oh my God, my kid could do that. And I'd say, well, you have a very talented child. <laughs> That's a good way to say it. <laughs> That's a good way to say it. Yeah, I, we've heard that a lot over the years. Um, and I would always say, well, that's great. I'd love to see it. <laughs> you know, of course, you never get to see it because it never happens. No, but no, no. It's, it's all, fine. Yeah. I think, you know, I think a lot of people speak out of ignorance. And that's not calling them stupid by any means. It's no, just means no. They really don't have a grasp of what artists um, do. Um, you, you have to be an artist to know what we go through on a daily basis, what we see what we dream about and then get up and paint, you know, um, or like a photographer, like, you know, I do everything. So for me, photography, everything is, is part of my artistry. So it's seeing things out of my own eyes and everybody has told me, oh, you have a really unique eye to see these things. I would have walked past a hundred times, you know, and I said, well, I'm, my eyes can't absorb it all, but I do tend to see the things that most people wouldn't or, or appreciate on a daily basis because we take a lot of things for granted. Yeah, and one thing, uh, just to go back a little bit, um, I've had people that would make the comment, oh, I used to paint. And that made me sad, like, why? Why did you used to and you don't still do it now? Why, there's nothing wrong with being a, a, a using as a, a, a hobby or a weekend artist. Yeah. There's people that uh, that work nine to five jobs or whatever, and uh, they enjoy doing it. Keep doing it if you right. enjoy doing it. You know, um, it, it doesn't have to be like uh, we're all not going to be a uh, Van Gogh or you know whoever. Um, well, and you should. It doesn't that matter. Be it's, what it's, you're it's, striving it's, for. You, you got to get the enjoyment out of it. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. I don't. I don't personally strive to be like anybody but myself. I mean, does certain things inspire me? Um, sure, of course. Um, do I have great appreciation for the greats? Of course I do. But I'm not trying to be them. I, I mean, how many Picasso painters and, you know, can you have? You know what I mean? Like, how, I mean, we've seen dozen of them. We've been to so many art uh, galleries and studios and we'd be like, oh, another Picasso. <laughs> Which is nothing wrong with it, but at the same time, I would love to see artists be themselves. I think, uh, believe it or not, I mean, some of my favorite painters uh, are not famous or popular or people don't even know who they are. Right, right. Um, I think But I'm that, just using that in, right, as an for example. example. Yeah. And I mean, I've seen children do better artwork than me. It's, sometimes they're just so spontaneous and yeah, wrong, and they're not, innocent. they're, they're not so innocent. They're not all like nervous and like it's such as, you know, yep, that's why you really need to get over uh people Yourself. make it i think too serious like they're walking up to a piano yeah and they don't know how to play but, but they have to like do something but most people and wouldn't it's... even sit at a piano if they don't know how to play i personally yeah. will sit there and oh yeah and tink around and play <laughs> and i love it i yeah. don't i i think that you you've hit the nail on the head there in terms of you know just being free free to be yourself free to ex be expressive raw and honest and pure you know I, I can't tell you the hundreds of conversations that I've had with artists over the years about them you know they're their own worst enemy yeah you can be uh, because you get too uptight about things and you just you got to get over all that 
Uh, and it's not an easy thing to do. I've gone through it. Everybody, oh, yeah. everybody, uh, you know, we all deal with that. And, and, and it's tough when you get uh, a, a critique and it's not a good one. Uh, you know, it can be kind of hard to swallow. Yeah. My thing has always been, you know, like certainly with certain series of my work, like the observation series, you know, I've always heard people say, oh, this is, you know, it's, it's very interesting, but I couldn't hang that in my home. It's too, it's too dark or it disturbs me or, you know, but then they'd come back years later and then it's no longer disturbing. It's almost like it opened up something in them and all of a sudden now they're free to have that feeling and now they feel um, okay with it. They, they feel differently about it. It's so weird how that happens. Yeah, sure. But I think too, you know, with artists, you know, even friends of mine, I always tell them, I'm like, you know, I wish you would just go and do it. Stop thinking about it so hard. Just do it because you've, I mean, years go by and they're so busy trying to, I don't know, come up with this perfect scenario in their minds. I, I don't really understand it. Instead of just being busy and creating and, you know, enjoying the process. And that goes to uh, not just art, but with a lot of things. There's so many people, oh, you know, I, you know, I, I wanted to go water skiing. I always wanted to do that. Well, go, you know, do it. Uh, why not? You know, I mean, even if you can't get stand up, who cares, you know? And if people laugh at you, <laughs> right. <laughs> whatever. Right, just do it and enjoy life. Yeah. But it's not easy. But yeah, you know. Uh, I was looking at these little bugs that keep flying down. Those are those stink bugs. That big one there, you mean? These little bugs that, like, one of them landed on me, and I, I saw one come down here. Yeah, no, those are, uh, they, yeah, yeah, those that, don't that, bother you. No, no, they don't bother you, but those are the stink nah. bugs. I just realized. Well, then don't uh, don't take any home with you. Well, <laughs> could be nice pets. But, yeah. I mean, it just, anything that happens in nature just is so interesting t for me to see. I don't get too afraid of bugs, but I don't want them on me either. <laughs> they are interesting though, but I'm sure you guys have a lot of them out here. Yep. Well, we got a train coming by here. Uh... Nice to hear the train and everything. <laughs> My family, we had some property in Alabama and we had a, a train not too far behind our house. And uh, it was always just, I don't know, something comforting to hear. Yeah, was that a Paul Simon song? Everyone loves the sound of a train in the distance. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's something about certain certain things that we we like see now now i'm uh, facing a problem because the sun is changing now right. so the sun is actually shining through my canvas <laughs> uh to the other side which is the side that i'm on right and um making it uh making a little more difficult to work but I uh, sometimes I, I'll put a piece of cardboard there or something but it's okay now well if you've made a lot of great progress from starting from a blank canvas to what you have now is pretty amazing
it's nice actually to see you working with oils, I have to say. Yeah. Because I'm so used to you working with uh, acrylics and then watercolors. Well, that's another thing. I love all to. Ch I love to change off and do different things. I love acrylic. I love pastels. Um, I love oils. I love. I love. I like to switch off every once in a while. Um, one of my favorite teachers I had in art school, his name was Bill Parks, and he always said, if you find you're getting yourself in a rut or whatever, and he would say this every day, and I think that's one of the only things I ever learned from the guy, is he would say every single day, try something different. <laughs> and he was right. Yeah. Because sometimes that's all you need is to just try something different, maybe a different media or, or whatever, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I've painted oils. I, you know, I'm like you. You know, I've always tried something new. I've tried, you know, I can't tell you. I don't even know if there's a medium I haven't worked with at some point. Mm hmm I think for me, oils is just really, um, it's just having a place to do it where you, you know, have good ventilation, you know, that kind of thing, because you have to work with a lot of different uh, chemicals. Well, the uh, I, I really basically uh, in a tube of oil paint, everything that that you really need is inside the tube. A lot of people think you need all these other additives, and you really don't. Um, I really basically uh, there are a lot of new products which are with our healthier and safer a turpenoid instead of turpentine. Paint thinner from the hardware store, don't use. It'll give you a headache, make you sick. Right. A little bit of linseed oil, oil uh, but I don't use that outside. Outside, I just, I paint them pretty much like a watercolor, which is turpentine. Yeah. And as you can see, I don't have a palette here. Right. Basically, I'm, I'm pretty much using just it out, right of the out of the tube, tube. like it's a box of pastels or something. Mm -hmm. And I'm just adjusting that. And then I can add my density later in the winter in the studio. Uh, when I do that. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to come back again to and get some uh, some more plain air with Carl. Um, but I'm glad that we were able to do that today because I think a lot of people, um, I hope, will be inspired to get out there and do some for themselves. Just enjoy yourselves and have fun and be out in nature and enjoy what we've just been enjoying these last 40 minutes or so. Um, but thanks, Carl. I mean, I appreciate being here with you. Well, you're very welcome, and thank, uh, thank you for uh, setting this up and inviting me uh, to this, uh, this uh, interview or conversation. It's, uh, it's been exciting. Been yeah, fun. we'll definitely have more talks uh, coming up with Carl because Carl definitely has a, uh, a rich history in art, and I mean, I've always loved um, talking to him over the years, and I think we are definitely going to do a lot of talking with Carl. Sound good? Sounds great. And the only thing that I can add is anybody who's watching this, whether you're outdoor painting or not, try something different. And uh, it's, it's uh, rejuvenating for uh, the mind and the soul. Absolutely. Great mm -hmm. advice, people. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for viewing um, Carl and this video. And if you like it, please punch that like button and um, subscribe and if you can please share with all of your artist peeps as our channel is just getting started and we're we're growing by the day all right i appreciate you guys take care thanks carl thanks robin